Um, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Roberto Acevedo. And I'm very, very happy and grateful uh, to, uh, to many people, really, many people in Pakistan. And in this opportunity in particular to a professor, uh, Said Leila Aruba. I'm sorry if the pronunciation is wrong. Uh, as a standard the chemist at Club University of Education, the Department of Chemistry, University of Education, and the campus, the, the name actually is quite complicated to me. It's something like how I heard up, but well, I'm really sorry but uh, I have no one to teach me how to pronounce properly these words. Now, uh, I was so kindly invited to participate in this activity. And of course, uh, my answer was yes, I'm going to do it. Though I was very, very busy and I'm very busy with the, all my uh, duties at the university because this is the end of the semester. And therefore, uh, they are still dealing with problems. Uh, the university has some activities, additional activities, to end up the semester properly. And therefore, as you may understand, uh, it has been rather uh, complicated. Nevertheless, the pleasure is entirely mine uh, to be uh, online with you. And uh, what we are doing at the moment, I'm taping this uh, in advance so uh, to avoid any uh, eventual problem for uh, tomorrow. Well, uh, at the moment, you see uh, the time difference between Chile and Pakistan is eight hours. In other words, Pakistani uh, time is uh, eight hours uh, fast than uh, Chile. Uh, therefore, when this uh, you see this, uh, what is going to happen is that, uh, give me a second. Okay, now we can continue. I'm very sorry about this. Well, I was uh, saying that um, I'm very grateful. And uh, as far as I understand, the kind of activities are organized by the chemistry club, chemistry club, University of Education, the Department of Chemistry, University of Education, and uh, how how the uh, bad campus. I'm sorry about the pronunciation, as I said uh, earlier on. Well, what I'm going to talk about, uh, the title of the talk is called uh, Electronic Activities and Nutrients in Modern Chemistry. Now, this is a very fancy, fancy uh, subject, which is really uh, more complicated than people may think about. If you consider electronic activity from a qualitative point of view, well, there is not much, not much interest. Nevertheless, when you use it for, for practical purposes, uh, the situation may become very, very, very complex indeed. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start with... Uh, my overture and so on. So what I have to do is to share my screen, which is something I'm going to do uh, right now. I'm here. I'm going to share the sound also. Uh, I'm here. Uh, now, uh, I've never done this before, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what we are going to do is... Uh, I will open from here, Kingston, E, and I have named this uh, uh, Pakistan. This is called uh, uh, Pakistan, yes. Pakistan, so not to forget what I'm doing. And here I am, as you can see, and I have the presentation which I have just uh, finished. I hope that everybody is uh, 
I can see this properly and watch my voice uh, properly. I'm a bit uh, concerned about the tone of my voice. Uh, also. Uh, the temperature in Santiago, uh, Chile, is very, very high. Nevertheless, there are temperature gra gradient during the day, and therefore you may get uh, an, a cold. Mine is not too bad. Nevertheless, uh, it makes some noises. Well, uh, my name is Roberto Acevedo. We're going to forget about all these titles and that kind of thing because it doesn't really matter. Uh, you, I started working in Chile at the University of Chile, which is Universidad de Chile, University, a major university, which is in Spanish is Universidad Mayor, and now I'm working at the San Sebastian University, in Spanish is uh, Uni Universidad San Sebastian, Santiago, the capital of Chile. Chile is a lovely country, about 20 million of people, and uh, my uh, index, which are relevant now, nowadays, at the Google Scholar is here, this uh, presentation is going to be sent uh, to Professor uh, Said Leila uh, Ruder, so uh, she can share the presentation with you if that is the point. And uh, the research gate is here, or the RC number is here as well. And the Scopus author is ID, is uh, the one I have here. And the loop uh, profile is the one I have here. In other words, uh, all the information about what I have done so far is there. Uh, I had to, uh, to tell you that I was, uh, well, I was doing some research. Uh, very, uh, it, it wasn't a very hard research for about 15 years, and this is because I became an academic authority of the university. I was dean of the faculty, a member of the Senate, of the major university in Chile. That took me about 15 years, the whole thing together. And therefore, I'm back again with research during the last four years, and I'm working as hard as I, possible, as, as, as I can. Now, let us start by saying something which I normally call, well, the, the name is electronegativity in short. And uh, my name is Roberto. My son's name is Acevedo. Uh, this comes from my father and Janos from my mother. Here we use the two surnames uh, at gmail.com. So if anyone wants or feel like writing to me, please uh, do not hesitate and just write to me. The Overture. This is not an opera, but uh, I like this. It comes from someone which I'm, uh, I'm going to mention him. Uh, later on in this presentation, the overview. Uh, if we read this uh, carefully, what we have is the master aim of the presentation is to describe and analyze the property of the rare earth element and the associated material concerning the outstanding properties are demanded by modern industry. This is very important, really. It's very, very important to declare why I'm going to do what I'm going to say, why I'm doing this, and what and why I have been involved doing research in the rare earth uh, for such a long time. I started with the subject in Charlottesville in the USA, and um, because I landed before, I was dealing with the transition metal ions, which involves 3D and 4D and 6D uh, uh, the orbitals, which are a lot easier than the uh, 3F and 4F, uh, no, sorry, the 4F and 5F uh, F orbitals, atomic orbitals. Now, it is in the world's world that this material exhibits remarkable properties and have led to the development of new technologies, which are the most likely, which are most likely to allow the final goal of utilization of the rare air elements in different materials. And this is very important for us, as you will see very, very soon indeed. So there is a motivation. We want to do this, but we, we love this. This is what we are doing, the kind of uh, research. Although it may be a bit difficult, uh, nevertheless, sometimes the beauty is behind something which is really beautiful. And uh, so it doesn't really matter 
what we do is we just go ahead and ahead and that's all. At this point, we have focus on a calculation model. And I have to say that we don't do uh, a lot of computing and modeling. What we do is theoretical chemistry and theoretical physics. That is the main point of what we do. And uh, um, the many processes taken into account to provide the best possible description for the past experimental data available from the literature for these materials. Uh, this is very important, really, the motivation, what you are doing, what you are doing, and what for, what, what you want to achieve in your life, in your academic life. I chose the academic life, otherwise I would have been doing something else. But there was something. The academic life it may be a rather complicated. It does not produce a lot of money, as you know, that's very well indeed. Nevertheless, it gives you satisfaction. It gives you uh, happiness, and that's very important. Uh, the second paragraph said that the subject is broad. It is very broad indeed. And we had decided to concentrate. Sorry, this uh, tilde over there is uh, tax Spanish our effort on some periodical property from the microscopic uh, viewpoint, which are most likely to influence our understanding of these materials, to, the, to be in a better position to put forward additional knowledge in the state of the art. This is very important. We want to move, to move further. We will focus on analyzing this factor upon which both the crystal radio and the effective radio, effective, it would be in English, of these uh, rare ions depend. Uh, it is crucial when dealing with the synthesis and observed property of this material, and as we will see throughout this presentation, the inclusion of concepts such as the multivariable function upon which this ionic radio, radio depends. This consideration may provide a reasonable route for industrial processes to synthesize this material, considering the ligand, subsistence, the surrounding, the coordination number, and the oxidation state. I'm going to repeat this again. Uh, this consideration may, may uh, provide a reasonable route for industrial processes. And there, my dear friends, we need to understand well the synthesis the kind of ligand subsystem surrounding the rare air metal ion, the surrounding of coordination number, the coordination number, which may be uh, six, seven, uh, well, up to 12, as we shall see, and the oxidation state. Here, we have to be very, very careful about the concept of oxidation state. Now, unless we are talking about uh, ionic compound called crystal, where we can really talk uh, about uh, properly about oxidation state. In this overview, we can spell out that the ionic ray for the whole series of the real air elements for the oxidation state, A plus two, and coordination number six. Uh, B, it could be plus three and coordination number six, C, plus three and coordination number seven, D plus three and coordination number eight. This is getting more and more complex. As you can see, E is plus three and coordination number nine, and F is plus three and coordination number uh, 12. So uh, honestly, the structure of this kind of compound is complex. Uh, what I'm going to do in the second point is uh, to acknowledge the people who has uh, me, who has, uh, they persuade me to love what I'm doing and uh, why I'm doing this. And I would like to uh, mention Professor Stephen Mason. He was here at home where I'm speaking to. Uh, he's a fellow of the Royal Society. He rests in peace. Professor Calvin Hausen from Denmark as well. He was a real, a real scientist from Denmark. Lab number four, Professor Brian Wybon. He is from New Zealand, rest in peace. He died in Poland. Jacek Kabowski, a very close, close friend of mine. He uh, is still working 
as emeritus professor in Turun, Nicolas Copernico University in Polum, Poland. Professor uh, Wislav Streck, the one here, he is a senior scientist in Broslav at the Institute of Low Temperature. And uh, it's called the Institute of, uh, of Low Temperature and Higher Pressure or something like that. Uh, Professor Slate, an American gentleman, a wonderful scientist. Professor Frederick Richardson, he is from the Charlottesville Department of Chemistry, uh, Virginia, United States of America, and Chile. Uh, this is a Professor Teodoro Meruani. He's a very, very, very important man in my life, as you will see very, very soon. Now, the first reflection is the whole chemistry reflects the behavior of electrons in various uh, potential fields. Experience has shown us, without any doubt, that the contact of electrons does not obey the classical law of motion. As a consequence, we can say, my friends, uh, chemistry is one huge manifestation of quantum phenomena. And that is something really, really interesting to, to uh, learn from the very, very beginning. <laughs> We're dealing with systems which obey the quantum mechanics, uh, both in the relativistic and the non-relativistic version of the quantum mechanics. It that depend on the number of electrons <laughs> of the system and many other reasons which will be uh, discussed uh, later on. A reasonable solution with a clear physical meaning becomes a formidable, a formidable task, even for the very small molecules. In order to gain some insight into electronic behavior, we must introduce artificial features into the system and, at the same time, not throw away any essential concept and phenomena. Here we have to be very careful. This is not something that we start calculating. So we have to understand the physics. We have to understand why we are doing that. We must have uh, enough experimental evidence. Otherwise, we have nothing to believe in. Without experimental data, there is nothing, nothing to do, really. Uh, from seriously, in general terms, molecules and complex ions contain many nuclei. And electronic and vibrational motions overlap the rotational structure. This is why you see vibrational structure. This is the spectrum mainly. And we have seen so far in this set of motivation, we are still in that stage, the model about charge density among bond atoms is a central concept in modern chemistry, particular to people like us who love understanding complex phenomena from a semi-empirical approach based on quantum mechanics. An atomic orbital is an agent function of the Schrodinger equation, as you, as you know. Uh, yes, we could talk a lot about this, but I think we are going to stop at that point. Uh, but by doing so, let me tell you that uh, any question is welcome, and therefore I can continue. Let go straight away to equation number one, which is the fundamental equation uh, in uh, quantum mechanics, the Hamiltonian, the function, which depend upon the coordinate and the time, i. This is uh, the uh, Planck constant over 2 pi, and the uh, different the, the derivative the, the, of the function with respect to time. The above equation is indeed very illustrative. Seen for a single mono uh, electronic atom, say for the interhydrogen, uh, helium plus, and that kind of thing, lithium, lithium plus two, and so on, uh, we can solve this. Nevertheless, if we have uh, more than one electron, we are really in, in a big problem because we have to use uh, uh, some approximation, which may be very, very severe. And here, at this point, the experience I have is that one has to be more than careful. One has to uh, be surrounded by very, very brilliant physicists and mathematicians. So not to lose the physics of what we are doing. This is not a simple calculation, plus 
one plus one equal to two. No, we are not talking about that. Uh, secondly, the wave function can be expressed under certain uh, condition as a product between the spatial part and the time and the uh, temporal part, which depends on the energy and the time. It's sometime here, it should be the time. Uh, there is a small problem here, which we are going to solve. Uh, this is a value representation in non-relativistic quantum mechanic uh, for a stationary state where we can make this kind of simulation. Furthermore, we may write for this monoatomic system the identity, the number three. This is the typical uh, solution for one electron uh, system, a number n, which depends on the, quant the principal quantum number and the secondary uh, quantum number, the radio radial part with the wave function, and these are the spherical harmonic, which depend on the uh, angle theta and phi. And this is the, my friend, the exponential of IML phi. And the values allowed in quantum mechanics are for N, is one, two, and so on. For L, we start from one up to N minus one for M, Sub L, we have uh, zero plus, my, uh, ma plus uh, minus one and so on. And uh, up to plus minus L and for S, S is equal to one to one over two for the electrons and MS plus minus uh, one over two. Therefore, uh, from here, it come out that we have electron with spin alpha and spin uh, beta. It is essential to observe that the principal spin quantum number is equal over one over two, which is something I mentioned in the line before. Consider a simple system such as, uh, for instance, uh, a process where A2 in the gas phase combined with B2 in fast gate to give two uh, uh, molecules, not two molecules, two mole of A, B in, fast, a, in gas phase. For simplicity, assume that the reagents are in the ground state. I'm trying just to make the thing easy. The most likely path for this reaction is uh, what I have written here. I have A2 combined with B2, and it does appear uh, a, something which is very important, which is called the activated complex. And uh, from there, you see under some condition, positive condition, we get the, the product as uh, we have uh, written that here. This is for a one step process. For completeness, a reason consider the diatomic molecules, A, B. And, uh, what we are going to do here, my friends, is uh, to consider that we have only one uh, a sigma uh, bonding, which is the uh, simple situation we can think of. In the first approximation, we may try the function, for instance, of psi AB, a linear combination, then you take the probability, in the complex conjugate, of the function, time the function, is equal to what you have there. Then you expand this and you get these things. Look at this. This is the diagonal bit, this one, this one. Uh, this one is allocated in A. This is allocated in B plus a cross term. This cross term is very, very important. Why? Let, let us carry on. The cross term, what I have done here is to, to write that, down that once again, because this term are, these two terms are indeed the starting point of the concept of bonding. There are therefore many associated properties such as ionization potentials, electroaffinities, bond distance, type of bonding, other properties. Uh, number three. Uh, there is a very famous uh, Nobel Prize winner twice, one in peace and the other in chemistry, Leon Pauli. He was in Chile once. 
and uh, he passed away a long time ago. Uh, he's very well known as one of the pioneers in conducting uh, profound research on the nature of chemical bonding. The reference, the most important one, I believe, is my opinion anyway, is the nature of the chemical bond. And uh, uh, Connell Press, 1960, he was a unique example of making complicated idea and formalism into simple concept. This guy was really, sorry, no guy, this gentleman was really a genius. There is nothing, nothing else to say, apart from thanking him for all his uh, great contribution uh, to humankind. Pauli suggested that for a single bond molecule, see all the approximation, the very basic approximation, the energy of a molecule of AB type is as given below. So what you have is the theoretical theoretical energy equal to uh, the one over two, the sum of the energy of A, A2 and B2 plus something, my dear friend, which I have not identified here. Nevertheless, there is a problem because if you think, and if you have enough experimental data, what you do is uh, you take the difference between the experimental data for the AB molecules minus, minus uh, the theoretical value for AB, calculated in this way. Uh, this is uh, the most simple approach that it was put forward by uh, Lynn Pauli. And some uh, what reason of the conclusion of the uh, Lynn Pauli was that the, when the ionic character of the bond increase, then the value of the difference B, which is uh, this delta here, my friends, increase. A better agreement achieved occur when instead of this one over two sum of the two, you get the geometrical, uh, you get this kind of uh, the root square of E, A2 times E, B2, when you get that. And uh, in general terms, the concept of an ionic bond appear natural, introducing the electronegativity, utilizing the identity. This is the first time in D where I have introduced the electronegativity, the difference between B uh, this is B two times, or, or twice, it should be B and A. I'm sorry, I'm going to correct that. And that is equal, according to Pauli, to delta prime over 30, taking 30 equal to the unit of electronegativity in unit of uh, kilocal over mole. Hydrogen, my dear friend, is a crucial element in this electronegativity scale, and it is assigned electronegativity value of 2.1. Following the model of Lino Pauli, we may, in the first approximation, talk about metallic and non-metallic elements in the periodic chart. Uh, for that purposes, choose uh, the electronegativity of hydrogen equal to 2.1, then all those elements with electronegativity smaller than 2.1 are metallic, and with electronegativity uh, bigger than 2.1 are non-metallic. Uh, this is something easy to understand. Nevertheless, it's not so simple as I said. The, what I have already said is just the overall picture, but there is something else. We must be very careful seeing the experimental evidence indicate that there are several elements which are very metallic indeed. For instance, uh, for set, set uh, atomic number equals 3, 4, 12, 19, 20, 37, and 38, 55, and 56. This is with the exception of uh, sodium. This is the only which is out of this element, which I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 element, which are two metallic. Now, for this, uh, some uh, correction factor should be introduced. Otherwise, the whole scale may fail. Uh, which are indeed remarkably metallic, as I say here, and some correction factor are needed. 
The exception is sodium, as I said, for set equal to 11, which follow the ex expected trend. There is also a caution to consider with those elements with, uh, with electronegativity values close to the reference of 2.1, uh, this should be point, no comma. Uh, please remember the 2.1 is associated to uh, the electronegativity of hydrogen. So hydrogen is the reference element and uh, element with electronegativity is smaller than 2.1 are metallic and bigger are uh, uh, non-metallic. Nevertheless, element with the electronegativity close to 2.1 uh, can actually act as uh, metallic and non-metallic. It does depend on the situation, the condition of pressure, volume, and temperature, and so on, and the surrounding. Uh, so there is something else to be considered here for those elements which, uh, who, uh, which uh, uh, have an electronegativity close to 2.1. This element behaves as metallic or non-metallic on a many occasions. This note an inclusive since the subject as we will see during the T-Stack, the third more effort and new models and ideas are required. So as we do in, in science, uh, we, all, we are always uh, looking for new ideas, something new to do. We don't want to do just the same or to repeat what somebody else has already done. Uh, well, I don't know, that's my point of view. It's not very fun to do that. Let us consider the following according to Linus Pauling. We are doing the, the most simple approach. We have an element in the gas phase. We add the ionization potential, the first one. Uh, what we get here is a cation, cation, plus one mole of electrons. In B, uh, the situation is just the opposite. Here there is a capture of one mole of electron, and we get a negative which is an ion, and plus the electron uh, affinity. Here we have the ionization potential, and here the electron uh, electronic affinity. It is important that in the first process, uh, this is, uh, is endothermic, and the second is exothermic. The experimental values, look at APs. Don't take your look out of this. This is very important here. The experimental value corresponding to the first ionization potential and electro affinity are in electron volts. That is the conversion. Uh, this is the conversion from one electron volt to a kilocal uh, over mole. According to Millikan, which was another extraordinary scientist, Nobel Prize winner as well, in 1966, the concept of electronegativity should reflect both the capacity of an ion, atom, ion, or molecule to increase its charge density, becoming negative, or lose, or lose it, uh, charge density, becoming uh, positive. Uh, well, this is what we have here. This uh, become positive, and here in the second, in B, it become uh, negative. Uh, egg can be egg, Y says, well, you use the the letter you want to. The important point is to understand the concept behind what we are talking about. Millikan went a bit further, one step further, and introduced uh, the electronegativity in his scale as one over two, the sum of the absolute value of the ionization potential plus the electroaffinity. For several chemical elements, the electronegativity values in the scale of Linus Pauling and uh, Millikan may be related among themselves by a simple identity. Be careful with this. Be careful with this, my dear friend. Although it looks very tempting to use it, you shouldn't use it. Unless, unless the conditions are very, very similar because the models are different. In the Linus Pauling model, we are uh, talking about the dissociation energies, that is the basis of the model. And here we're talking in terms of the 
ionization potential and the electro, uh, electronic affinity. Uh, those concepts are not the same. And therefore, the framework or the network you want is different. And therefore, we have to, uh, we have to be very careful. Perhaps this uh, D may work for very simple and light uh, atoms, ions, very light one. Not too heavy, because if they are heavy, we are in problems. We have to use uh, the relativity quantum mechanics, of course. The reader must be careful about using conversion identities from one model to another. This is very important, please. Um, in general terms, each model considers several assumptions and therefore a physical constraints. So in principle, we can only combine ideas and concepts in addition to optimization procedures, which obviously we are going to use if there are software uh, uh, which are very powerful and can do uh, their job. When models are physical, plausible, and the idea behind the result come from very similar base, uh, physical basis, well, you can use the kind of uh, conversions and go from one scale to the other. We can also include models from other authors, such as Florinda, Alfred Rocho, uh, Liu, and Gordy. I didn't want to write uh, those equations here because there is nothing new there, apart from the screening factor. It is interesting to consider the research work due to Alfred Rocho. And this man said that and the, the two, Alfred and Rocho, an electric negativity is scale based on electrostatic forces. And it was published in the Journal of Inorganic Nuclear Chemistry, volume five, page the initial page is 264 in 1958. Please take a look at this article. And if you don't have it, uh, you can ask. You can always ask. If I can do it, I will do it. For brevity and simplicity, we will undertake a jump, a quantum jump, because we cannot carry on and on and on with this. We have already spoken for, for some time. Uh, for uh, brevity and simplicity, we will undertake a quantum jump into the model put forward by T. R. Sanderson. This guy was really, 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 really very clever. Uh, I am not saying that he's clever than the others. I'm just saying that his model seems to be uh, more uh, flexible. It can be used. And uh, all I need is a pocket calculator. I don't need a PC or a special uh, computing program. Nevertheless, you have problems. Uh, this is science, my friends. We are building up science every single day. That's the reason why we do research. Uh, the book is a Chemical Periodicity, which I found a copy in a very old school in Santiago, Chile, through a friend of mine. And I have and the PDF for that is uh, chemical uh, peri periodicity, the Reinhold uh, Physical and Inorganic Chemistry textbook series, 1960. Professor Sanderson was an outstanding professor of inorganic chemistry in the University of Iowa. Uh, Iowa City, Iowa. This magnificent piece of work has a learned of 330 pages. It's, uh, it's a book to read during your holidays, really. Representing one of the most comprehensive and outstanding pieces of work in the state of the art. In my view, the book is really, really, really good. There are so many examples, my dear friend, of very complex destruction and uh, which is worth uh, reading it and having it if you can. Many of the topics covered and highlighted in this textbook are well uh, unsatisfactory, unfortunately. Uh, this factual statement underlines the need for more good research in many areas of academic interest and eventual and necessary application to the productive sector. sector. Uh, although you see the book is quite good, as I said, there are uh, some problems, and you will see the problem soon. 
And uh, this was, uh, in a way, something I was expecting, really. I know that uh, behind any theory, there must be some problems, some errors, or something to improve. Uh, so uh, when I start reading this, and I'm going to tell you a story uh, soon, I find out that there are some data which is missing. It's not reported. And there is a reason for that. So after uh, some time of doing research and trying to get the answer from the first principle using quantum mechanic, I found out that there are some point which cannot be overcome uh, easily, not at all. Uh, yes, from our point viewpoint, we can uh, we came across the Sanderson electronegativity scale in a series of lectures in structural chemistry delivered by a Chilean professor, uh, Teodoro Meruane. He was indeed one of the very best uh, lecturers when I was studying. Just entered the university and I found this gentleman. And uh, well, we are very close friends. He is in well shape, although his age, he is a lot older than me. And uh, he, the godfather, of one of my uh, daughter. So we have a very close uh, relationship. And uh, he used to work at the University of Chile. He and um, one of his mentors, Professor uh, uh, Alfonso Morali, he, this uh, gentleman was also a lecturer of mine in analytical chemistry. And they wrote a book, a textbook called uh, Problemas and Ejercicios en Química Inorganica. In, in English, it would be something like Problems and Exercises in Inorganic Chemistry in 1964. Uh, the number of pages is 140 pages. You can find it in Spanish in ResearchGate. And the number of reads is uh, 3,506. Uh, although the language, many, many people read this. Uh, and sometimes, you know, some weeks, I find that uh, this work is, uh, well, is interesting for many different people. He uh, taught us with love and care. This is very important. The way that a professor treats the students. And many of us got static and decided to continue with further study in chemistry and physics. Although when I was younger, just out of the university, it was a good thing to do is uh, to enter a bank for them, to become an employee of a bank, to buy your own house, to have your car and so on. Uh, nevertheless, people like many of us were involved studying books and books and books and books, but being happy. Because money may, uh, may be something that we all need, but we need what we need. We don't need more than what we need. If you have more, please do share what you have uh, and you don't need with the people in need. This is the way I think. I'm not a priest, I'm nothing like that. But that is the way I think. And you know, uh, by looking for a place where to do good research, uh, there was a good position in London. And I applied through the British Council in, in Santiago, and I decided to get involved in solid state spectroscopy of inorganic uh, materials. I had to tell you something. Teodoro Meruane, the one, the guy, one of my mentor, godfather of my one of my daughter, he uh, did a, a great job. He started looking for many a professor in the United Kingdom, in particular in London, and he found one in particular. Uh, that professor was an assistant professor. He was not a reader by that time, but he was full of energy. He wanted to be promoted. Therefore, the man was really working very, very hard. And he was working, you see, in a in some situation of metal ions. And this particular guy did the PhD at the Imperial College, and then he went for a postdoc to Kalbachhausen, 
the one I, I, I made a tribute to him as well. So in other words, uh, I feel bad housing is uh, somewhere close to me saying that, well, you are doing right, you are doing wrong, uh, you are getting lazy, you are overworking yourself. And so I can, in a way, I think that I feel that. And uh, you know what I think is that the more I understand, the less, the more ignorant I, I become. So I get to, I need to study to work more harder and hard. And that's something very important I have to say and declare that I have a very close relationship with people in Pakistan. And I love Pakistan. They, they do a lovely science. And uh, well, I have so many good things to say about them. Also, I know some people in Karachi and uh, a friend of mine. And well, this is life, my friend. The world may be too big too, perhaps, but uh, nowadays, nowadays, my dear friend, and uh, using, by using internet or WhatsApp and so on, you got to get in touch with people uh, very quickly and make good, good friends. I have very good friends in Pakistan, so I do appreciate that, and I thank the Lord for that. The forthcoming section will be a tribute to uh, Stephen Mason. I mentioned about that. Carver House and Brian Wyburn. He was a brilliant, brilliant a scientist, my dear friend, from New Zealand. I met him in Poland. He was living in Poland. And his family, I'm talking about, uh, I understand he has uh, one son and one daughter were living somewhere in Africa, having a good time there. And uh, well, due to the matter reason, he decided to stay in Toru, thanks to uh, Jessica Bobsky. But Jessica Bobsky went to the head of the department and said, look, we have Brian here. Get a contact for him. And that's the way that he got and stayed in Poland and died there in Poland. Um, I visited, I visited uh, Wybon and Karbowski twice, even, and one of my uh, grandson is called Jacek, behind, uh, after uh, Jacek Karbowski. It's some kind of honor uh, to have. Well, to know about that kind of name. Well, I'm not going to start crying here, but uh, I remember them and uh, with a lot of love and I care about them. I will uh, struck. This man was really fantastic. He very fantastic, he very active, working very, very hard in Bros Lab in Poland. Uh, Professor Slater, I mentioned him, an American, Premier Nobel, uh, Nobel Prize winner, Fred Richardson, an extremely distinguished professor, I did my postdoc in Virginia, and the key guidance, and Teodoro Miruani, my, let me call him uh, my friend, and my tutor in Chile. And uh, then we have worked hard to move forward with the model of Andy Sanderson. Uh, because you see, uh, once uh, when uh, Lino Pauling came over to Chile and he stayed, for a couple of days here in Chile, a number of students uh, made an appointment and went to visit him in his hall, in the hotel where he was staying. And uh, the student asked him, uh, Professor uh, Lin Pauli, could you be kind enough to tell us uh, uh, why, why your scale of electronegativity seems to be so simple. Nevertheless, the scale of Sanderson seems to be more powerful than yours. Is there anything you can say about this? It was something like a, a journalist interviewing <laughs> someone. And uh, Lino Paulin, the very clever man, said, well, I, I do believe that Sanderson is a lot cleverer than me. That was his answer. And fully stopped to that story. And uh, the model of electronegativity. This is, this is the subject we are talking about. The main idea is to introduce some additional new idea to the scientific community concerning electronegativity. This is the point. Uh, there are so many problems, too many problems, my dear friends, and we need to, to do something because electronegativity is more important than several properties. 
We have started an active program of research activity over many years from San University in Chile in close collaboration with our friend abroad. Where I mentioned at least two groups in, uh, in Pakistan. We have been working also with distinguished scientists from the USA, Europe, and Asia. Um, this humble introductory talk is devoted to young scientists of the chemistry class and the University of Education in Haura. Uh, I'm going to try very hard to pronounce it properly, campus in Pakistan. The primary purpose of this talk is persuade the student, and this is very important to work on new ideas and put forward simple model to understand the ongoing research activities all over the earth. This is the main, uh, uh, the main goal of a master. Uh, it's not just a lecture. Master is someone who really guide you, give you not just good advices, give you uh, the real knowledge without expecting anything to them from you. And we have seen so far, hopefully, we have uh, gently introduced the main idea of electronic activities. At least we discuss the some ideas of Alina Paulin, some idea of Alfred Rocho, and so on. And they are physical meaning. We have also underlined the need for additional research to deal with the new and extra extraordinary advances achieved so far in many areas of knowledge. Our best friend is speaking knowledge and our capacity to choose areas of interest to improve the quality of life of human uh, mankind, which is the most important thing uh, in my case. Most of us understand that education is critical for progress and organize hard working society. And therefore, uh, we should really uh, seduce our students to become better and better, to work harder and harder, and to produce more and more new ideas, fresh ideas. I believe in fresh starts, although I am very old, but I do believe in fresh starts, and you, that are very, very young, can do it. Uh, some critical work in the literature it is important because, you know, uh, my presentation is not like other presentations. It's not because I want to be different. It's because this is like a, a lecture and delivery to my student or to a friend of mine. And I believe that you are a friend of mine. Uh, for instance, the, a new scale of electronegativity based on electrophysicity uh, index, uh, Journal of Physical Chemistry, uh, crystal radio and effective ionic radio of rare air ions, journal solid state chemistry. Look at journal physical chemistry, solid state chemistry. Here there is uh, a very important review. Unfortunately, my dear friend, it is in Spanish. And to translate that in English is going to take a long time. We have also uh, uh, the version is uh, is to be uh, to be found. I think it can be found easily because in 1999 it's not too old. Uh, volume one uh, to one, and the number of pages is uh, very very small for this index. Uh, also, I have journal of physical chemistry, and also journal of quantum information science. Really, we move from a uh, journal of uh, the American Chemical Society, the journal of uh, solid state chemistry, the journal of physical chemistry. So really important journals. There is a particular work which I like very much is molecular of bioequivalence or antibio uh, bioavailability. The ISSN is there, is given there. Let us concentrate, please, on some idea of electronegativity uh, in the scale of uh, Sanderson. Is Sanderson, huh? uh, I have to add O-N here. Uh, Sanderson, how uh, to introduce the electronegativity as a stability relations using the ratio, look at this amount. In other words, up to there, I know that this, the basis of this scale is different from the others. 
using the ratio among the mean charge density and the ideal charge density. In the way it is here, electron uh, stability relation, uh, the ratio between the mean uh, the mean uh, charge density over the uh, the ideal charge density. When I say ideal, I'm talking about the uh, some particular column in the uh, periodic charge. Before I go into that, let me say what D in the model of Sanders is. Is the, the atomic number over four over three pi r to the cube, which is the volume of an sphere or a sphere. And this is uh, roughly uh, 0.24 atomic number r to the cube, where r is the covalent ratio in atoms. Uh, all the theory of this gentleman start with uh, this approximation here. Uh, I have to say something else. The by expression di corresponds to the ideal charge density of the noble gases such as alien, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon. I said that in Spanish. The ideal charge density proposed by Sanderson are those for the uh, noble gases are uh, 0 0.59 and so on. Up to uh, Renin, which is 2.09, I had to change the comma by point and that kind of things. A unit of antrum. Then, some reference value. Maximum value is for fluor, which is uh, 5.75. The reference value is for hydrogen, which is uh, 3.55. In the linear Pauling scale, is 2.1, as you know. The minimum value is for uh, cesium, which is uh, 0.49. What, what is interesting, well, the value reported for the uh, this uh, stability relations for neutral atoms. Look at this, please. Section A. I know the value for from one to twenty-two. One is uh, atomic number, twenty-two atomic number. I'm just uh, referring, uh, you know, uh, the interval of the atomic number where I have all the data between 29 and 40, but I don't have between 23 up to 28. That's missing. There is a problem there. Look from here. I don't have from 41 up to 46. Another problem. Here, my friend, the situation is getting more and more complex. I don't have from 58 up to 78. I don't have that. And from there, I go to the last one, which is has set equal to 86. In other words, what I can say, my friend, is the ideal charge density is, I would say, well-defined for ideal for these uh, gases, alien, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon. Well, I, I never use that in uh, in English, and because it doesn't matter, I normally use uh, the atomic number and the screen factor. But it is interesting to observe the word I by Sanderson. Here it is well written. He suggests the conversion between the linear Pauling scale in and his scale using the identity. We are in problem here. The bases are completely different. So. How can we write that? Well, one of my students, Eric Fabian Montesino, did that and evaluated the, uh, the electronegativity uh, for all the elements, for all the elements in the periodic uh, chart. And uh, of course, of course, uh, after that, he himself found several errors. Uh, for instance, somebody predicted that the element should be uh, metallic, and it wasn't metallic, and things like that. So 
there's some work there. And here, my friend, we need to understand. We need to understand why we are using the covalent radio and why we don't have value for the ideal electron density. We can do something. Of course, we can do something. This is something that sometimes I teach to my students how to uh, extrapolate and get that. But to extrapolate is something dangerous, as you know. And uh, you have to take that very, very careful. You may make a very big mistake. At this point, we must remember and never forget the statement. Uh, look at the statement. To crack a nut, you only need a small hammer, not a pump or a laser projector, because uh, you don't need that. So what I want is not to use an artificial intelligence program or something even more important than that. And you see, to solve this problem, I need to understand well what idea charge density mean, which are the correction factor, which I need to include. I need to introduce quantum relativity, quantum mechanics, something we are doing at the moment. We are making progress. Slowly, but we are making it. Very important progress. And what we plan to do is to uh, to publish this in the very, very near future. Of course, I'm going to ask some of my friends. It could be in Pakistan to do some experiment and to prove uh, the city we are going to put forward. Because it, it is important, the theory and uh, the experimental part as well. Some preliminary discussion. This is very important. We know that our students need a highly competitive and effective learning to progress in their lives and contribute to human mankind. This is very important. There is no discussion about that. We have discussed uh, what we can do with a limited amount of financial resources and send our professional with value, principle, and integrity to the productive sector. Uh, I would advise, take that from a very old fellow like me, uh, telling you, please, don't you ever forget that integrity. And do the best you can. You have to understand that you are the very best. You are unique. And therefore, you can take your own decision. Just take the right one. And that's all I pray you to do. A humble contribution from us will be soon online. Uh, we wrote an article. Look at this. We are not just interested in scientific problems. We are doing, trying to do something else. For instance, the book is, going, is, is called uh, Academic Study on Social and Economic Issues, ISSDN, which is here the number. This is the editorial, December 2022. This is a Turkish publishing house. And the title of the article, which is ready, I have the PDF. It was effective teaching in the post-pandemic stage. College and university education, Chile is a case of a study. The author, uh, well, my name, and this is very important. I have to mention this. Uh, there is a, an I which is missing here, it's Sisi. Sisi Bijit. She is uh, one of my daughter. She is very, very keen in science and humanity. And Andres Soto is a former student of mine, and he did the doctor in science under my uh, guidance. Additionally, most of our study follow the piece of art. For instance, which are the piece of art, in my view. You may have another, but it would be interesting to know. There is a book, it was dedicated to me in London. It's called A Chemical Evolution, Origin of the Element, Molecule and Living System, written by Stephen Mason, my dear friend, who rests in peace. Clarendon Press, Oxford, 1991. 
After that, I have a second one, which I think is beautiful as well. It's called The Physic as a Journey by uh, Brian Wybond in Torun, uh, 90, 1998, Nicolas Copernico University Press, Torun. Uh, this book is wonderful as well, Molecular Electronic Structure of Transitual Metal Complex uh, uh, by Kalbachhausen, the Macro Hill, 1979. Uh, those are the some of the books. The other is the book I mentioned about uh, Morales and Miruane, uh, which has over 3,500 uh, reads in research grades. And that book was written in uh, 1964. In our academic journal, journey, we have tried to hard to advance the state of the art in lanthanide type system, M2, sodium, the lanthanide, and X6. It could be a uh, uh, Cl negative, uh, Br negative, or any of those ana anion from a theoretical uh, point of view. We have mainly concentrated on the first internal transition series of the chemical en elements and observed a rather complicated set of luminous spectra and some complicated structure. And this is true. Huh? Uh, we were the first to report the structure of the CS2. Na, cedium, Cl6. It was never uh, reported before. I think that was a very lovely work done by uh, Victor Poblete for my student of, of Dr. Design of mine. For this lantern I use, the electronic valence structure in both shell and subshells with unfilled F electron. It go from F1 to F13. A strategy. What can we do? Uh, first, to teach our student topics such as structural characterization using different techniques available in our labs, laboratories, to learn as much analytical chemistry as possible, please do that. I was uh, learning that for two years at the university. And really, I'm very fond of this. Third, to seduce uh, them, the student, to take their own decision. One decision, one the decision is adopted, they learn how to love them. The student do uh, best when they love what they are doing by themselves. They choose, they do, and they love what they do. And that, that is the optimum. Fourthly, to understand how to read the, by the periodic chart of element comprehensively. This is very, very important. I have with me a periodic table, which perhaps you may see. This one, a very old one. It was given away to me by uh, Professor Federico uh, Francisco Santa Maria, who passed away. And uh, he did a good job. Nowadays, you can have the periodic table in your uh, pocket, uh, iPhone or, or mobile, whatever you have. Main problem. Where the main problem? One, the conversion of electronegativity value between the Lino Pauline and Sanderson models by using this kind of uh, relationship. Be careful when you use this. Unless you do it for element with atomic number, no, no uh, bigger than 20, very, very light atoms. It by no means applicable to several elements in the particular chart, and it is quite a challenge for our purposes. We as a country need to be more efficient, I'm talking about Chile, and competitive to achieve our goals. Chile based a significant fraction of its economy on metallic and non-metallic resources. So we need to understand this. This is not something that we need to follow, I don't know, somebody else, somewhere else. We need to do our best with the copper and all the other non-metallic uh, resources we have. We have a lot of lithium, rain, and so on. Consequently, we must generate new ideas to achieve our goals and contribute more effective, effectively to the country economy and welfare. This is really very, very important to us. What we have as a country, a significant amount of metallic and non-metallic resources. So we need to put more effort, more energy and new ideas into this area. 
Copa and Lithium are topic of great interest in, in, uh, in both the academy and the productive sector. Third, we need to strengthen our collaboration with the private sector to get fresh money to update our laboratories and hire top professional and scientists from, from any country. We must be able to create simple models to account for many processes. We also need to deal with new and advanced material. We must create simple and complicated models to understand the material we are dealing with, with daily. Some results. It is important, I hope, what I have already said to you, but which are some of the results which I think are interesting and relevant. Firstly, we are working with undergraduate students. This is what we have been doing so far. Secondly, we emphasize the need for them to fully understand the scientific methods and the inner theory of system. I have a beautiful paper on this, the general theory of systems. Certainly, they are titled memories, and this is a quite a change. You have the backup of at least one international publication at the very least, one. We are just talking about titled memory for undergraduate students. Uh, we want them to do research in their life, and we have to guide them to the best of our abilities. A student should get used to understanding new technique of programming. Metaverse, uh, last uh, Saturday, I, had, I organized a webinar with a friend of mine in, from India. He is professor of the Bharata Data. He's working in Calcutta at the moment. Uh, he was talking about this, uh, the metaverse, which the simple definition of the network of interoperable 3D virtual worlds, this world manifests as an immense internet, which people experience using virtual reality, VR, a headset, or augmented reality, AR technologies. This is really, really, really important. The seminar, the webinar is in my uh, in my uh, YouTube uh, site. So you can uh, look, look at that and read, and listen to what he has to say. He's an expert on this. Uh, the other, some of my students are working on, on the philosophy of science and nanotechnology. This is a very, very, very relevant subject at the moment. So we are working on that. And we have a student doing that. And Leah have two at the moment. Which is the challenge? To work out some correction factor, considering legal subsystems surrounding coordination number and chart density in complex systems. That's the challenge. To do all the need, correction needed in the Sanderson scale of uh, uh, electronic activities and, and so on. Uh, some additional reference. What have we done with our students and some of our collaboration? I'm not going to list uh, the publication, Scopus publication here. Uh, this is a uh, modest, but it's good quality, I think. The first one, it has to do with the economical model of the Chicago Boys, which was applied in Chile. The second one is an overview of synthetic approaches toward the traditional of tetralone and so on, age, sultant, and, uh, well, all the rest. Uh, say that Leila Rubab here as well, Ali Irfan, which I have, I have been very unhappy not hear from him for, for some time. That was published in Material Science Research in India. And number three, an overview of the structure, biological importance, and synthetic approaches of, and so on, in the H.S. Sultan and some of the people that were published in the Unamo of Chemical, Chemis, uh, Chemical Science. Then rare airs, time material, and industrial application. And here we have an, one of other undergraduate students, Felipe Hernandez Sangüesa. Uh, a chlorine nature for, for another uh, age of Sultan. Uh, this is uh, fairly new. 
a review of microplastic, a fairly new as well, and uh, experimental measurements and mathematical adjustment on blinds. This, this is a very good article, actually. It was published in the Indian Journal of Industrial and Applied Mathematics. I do recommend people who are uh, interested in this area to ask for a copy of this article or just get it from your library. Uh, another, where we have a student, Victoria Anza and Quell uh, Peel, which is another. Most of them were a undergraduate student and they published as well. And the development only of the lithium industry in Chile, this is going to be published now in December, late December, 2022. So all I want to say is that we are including our students in research the more I can and working on a very small uh, career of mining, major mining, and uh, we're doing our very best. We don't have a lot of students and uh, I hope that soon the university will take some decision about uh, a higher degrees, which could be a master, a doctor degree. Nevertheless, for that, they will need uh, a good academic staff and they have to be uh, highly competitive with other universities, which have a very long tradition in Latin America and South America and very well, uh, very good people trained mainly in Europe and in the United States of America. And that roughly what I wanted to tell you, the challenge we have, what we, what we are doing, what we have done so far, as far as this subject is a concern. And I guess that uh, I, well, more than I guess, I hope that they have reached you. And well, this is all I want to say for the time being. Uh, this is just uh, a backup for uh, Professor Leila Rubab. So I'm going to finish this and send it over to her in the hope that tomorrow we're not going to have an internet problem. Thank you very much indeed. And I'm going to stop sharing.